All right, here you go. So my auxiliary lever, lever began to stick uh, a lot and it wasn't returning and I'm not sure why. Um, so I took off the lever, which is gonna be this thing, comes up right through here and controls the grapple. So uh, when I would open or close the grapple, it would simply stick the lever you know, forward or backward and the, the it would take up all the hydraulic power of the, the machine and you wouldn't be able to drive. And if you, you, you know, there's a test where you push this forward and then you push that foot pedal down there, uh, that foot pedal, and then you make sure that it holds this in the forward or backward position. And then uh, assuming that that works, then you take your foot off the pedal and then the, at a count of three, this should return. So this was kind of sticking one day and it started to be sticky and we didn't really know why on a hot day. And so then uh, it kind of went away on its own and then it came back in full force to the point where, like I said, the grapple was no longer letting go and it was very hard to run this machine. You're constantly having to re-grab this part instead of driving with the left hand, which was causing troubles. So when you take this off, obviously it's just got a half inch nut there and then a half inch, which I don't know if it's welded, but it's screwed all the way into the threads. Take off these Allens right there. They're 532nd and I only have two which would be that one right there, and then the one on the other side right here. And just get those out with an Allen key. Mine were quite loose. There is a rubber gasket down there. Uh, be careful not to lose that rubber gasket. Once this little block comes out, what you'll find is, if I can show you um, from the side, if you see a little circle of grease, right? I can't do both, but right in the center there, uh, right there, my finger, um, all I did was I put grease right there, I put grease on the other side, which is identical, and I pulled this boot off. Now, to get this rubber boot off, you have to take out that screw and pull this arm off, which might be a little tight. And then underneath that boot, there's a huge cavity, and all there is is just a little arm that pivots on that on that uh, rod right there, and that rod is pressed in. That's uh, It's pressed into the ball arm, actually. And so when you push up and down on this thing right here, I don't know if you can see it, but that center actually turns, okay? So the pivot point is in these cheeks, one on this side and one on the other side. And so all I did was I jammed as much grease as I could get, lithium grease, into this cavity right here as I could where the arm goes in. And I just wiggled that arm back and forth, back and forth, and then I took my heat gun, which I would think you could probably use a torch, but all I did was just use the heat gun to persuade that grease to go into the crevice and it melted it down just a little bit, nothing too crazy. Like I said, I think a torch could do the exact same job. All you want to do is just make the grease go into those pivot points because they're totally non-greasable, non-serviceable, but this is a separate component on the machine. I hope that helps you guys. I know it helped me once I got this thing off because they told me at the Bobcat dealership this was a sealed assembly and that was non-serviceable, but this part does come right off and you can sort of persuade it to get a little looser and potentially solve that sticking problem if that's what you're having. Works perfect. To sum up this video, this is an awesome reason why you shouldn't just start throwing parts at something whenever it breaks down. Uh, sometimes the best option is in fact to investigate the problem first before you go spending money. I saved $2,500 this part, which is a valve um, control valve, they call it, uh, literally $2,500 from Bobcat and it's non-serviceable. And they said they had only three service records or th three service um, memos or something on that device in the entire history of MT100s. And so that should indicate that it's a very long lasting part. Um, I took it apart myself. I don't know what to say. Replacing parts, spending a lot of money is not always the best thing. This actually tipped me off uh, to go on vacation. I couldn't take it anymore. It's funny as it only took me like an hour once I had calmness in my spirit and I was able to work on it. But it was just so stressful. You know, it was like making the machine very hard to operate and drive. But as soon as a little bit of grease got into those pivots, it was all good to go. But obviously, I don't know how that was, they were supposed to get grease. Obviously, whatever lubricant was in there when it was built went away and um, there's such tight tolerances there it just was metal on metal and it started to wear and clearly that part is replaceable separate from the control valve but i did not ask because i didn't know it was a separate part at the time but yeah it's just two little allen screws and it's got four holes but you only put two of them in apparently um, 
the rubber gasket has three holes. There's four holes in the control valve and there's only two screws on the machines when I took it apart. So anyway, um, you know, I hope this helps you guys. If you have a sticky control valve, maybe it's a different model, but I would definitely look into those little pivot pins because it seems like they designed it where it was non-serviceable. It was supposed to just service itself and the grease was just supposed to naturally flow into that space. And so I just jammed so much grease in there. It wasn't the nice, clear, like super duper long lasting bearing grease, like sealed bearing grease or whatever that they put in there. It was some whole different type of grease, white lithium grease it said, but I don't really care. I just put it in there. And if I have to grease it again later, then having some grease in there is better than no grease. Obviously just having grease nearby down the, down the, you know, component a couple you know centimeters is not sufficient to grease those pivot points they actually have to be greased and the heat helped it to go right in there and loosened it up too there's plenty of spring pressure and you can push the rod up and down um where that little ball controls because the ball goes like this and then it you know as you basically control the lever the ball pushes that thing up and down like that and it and so it's a it's a shaft and it goes up down and that's the that's the spool valve i think it's called so you can push that down and you can feel it's got lots of spring pressure popping it back up. It's not binding internally and that solved the problem. So anyways, you guys have an awesome day and I will see you on the next one.